India's population has just surpassed China's population to make it the largest country in the world. And also the Indian American population has just surpassed the Chinese American population just a little bit. So I guess, David, what does all this population competition mean? Let's go, buddy. We are now number one in Asia, but also number one in population in Asian America. Well, you know, I just want to let you know there, buddy, that uh, if it wasn't for maybe one or two policies and things that we did, we could have been the most populous country still. But, you know, you know, sometimes you make decisions in life and you have to live with them. Yeah, this is going viral right now, especially for anybody who follows these sort of like global macro trends. Andrew, India's population has surpassed China's 1.41 billion population and growing now. There's so there, a lot of people have predicted that this point was going to come, but this transcendent sort of surpassing point of population has finally happened. Interestingly enough, concurrently, it also happened in Asian America around the exact same time. Yeah, the Indian population in America is now at about 4.4 million, um, surpassing the Asian-only Chinese population, which essentially means a full Chinese people. Yeah, because there's also a lot of mixed heritage Chinese people. So if you count them, then the Chinese population is still larger. Right, technically there's a yeah. lot more half and half Hapa Chinese than there yes. are Hapa Indians, right? Anyways, guys, we're going to get into the comment section and our own thoughts. Does this mean anything at all? Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hop Hop Boys. Andrew, we got to talk about it because uh, we're Chinese or Chinese American. And uh, Chinese and Indians are really interesting because those are the two biggest, most populous countries in the world. They're right next to each other. They're separated by the Himalayas. They're actually two of the oldest civilizations on earth. They're two of the five most ancient civilizations on earth and some of the only ones that are considered still standing. Yeah, not only that, David, they also share the engineering department at most universities because as we know, they produce a lot of tech people. Um, obviously, Indi there's a lot of Indian CEOs and there's a ton of Chinese companies and Chinese tech workers and leaders Indians. and founders. We prefer the software. For Chinese like you, you prefer the hardware. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess, dude, there's a lot of jokes here. Um, it's crazy. And I, I think a lot of people would admit that these two countries are going to have a huge say in the future of the globe. Dude, is it crazy that the Indus Valley and then the Chinese, you know, Jahu Yellow River civilizations, and like we said, some of the oldest, and they're going to define like the next century moving forward, like in the sense of like, Nobody knows which right. way they're going to zig or zag, right? I think, obviously, the Western European civilization had an amazing run, still going to be strong, but they're sort of, like, spoken for already, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you know what? Both cultures, you know, they have a lot of spice. And one spice that really fits in is smala sauce, guys. It's our very own chili oil. Pre-orders are still going on right now. Very delicious, made with truffle, Sichuan peppercorn. Please get it right now, smalasauce.com. It's our very first product. I'm so happy about it. It took 14 months to come up with the recipe. But anyways, guys, um, David I would say this, man. Indians have always had a gigantic population, but they have, a. I would say, statistically, they have a lot more children. Yeah. Because obviously China had a one-child policy yes. that they just broke free from, or they like... I think it's like two and possibly even three childs now, depending on your situation. But the thing is, people got so accustomed to the one child system, they're just sticking to only having one kid. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we can get in the debate on if it's a good thing or a bad thing. What, do you want a large population as long as you have opportunities for them and your country can, can you know, uh, uh, provide for them, then yes, then fine. A large population is not bad. Having a large family is fine. But I guess... Um, I want to quickly go into some of the interesting stats about this real quick because I think a lot of people need to know why India's population is so big. And it's because you're actually starting to see the impacts of a huge fertility boom starting from the 60s and the 50s all the way to the 90s of India. Now... In the 2000s, yes, the fertility is starting to slow down, but you're still seeing all the offspring of the 90s coming up. Yeah, I believe 50% of India as a country, its population is 25 and under, whereas in China, only 25% of its population is 25 right. and under. So China's issue is that they have an aging population and not enough young people. And India, if you consider it a problem, has a ton of young people and maybe not enough opportunities for all of them. Right, right. Like what jobs are they going to get? Right. right. Because the, the economy has to provide for it, but that may also lead to the booming numbers try uh, wanting to immigrate to America as well. Yeah, so I think that's really interesting that in the Indian American population, if you only count, I guess, 
in this study full Indians and full Chinese people, then it's also booming. And that's largely because of the tech boom in the 90s. The H-1B, uh, H-1B visa applications are, in, are very, very high from India. Um, obviously, India as a country has better relationships with America. It's not seen as the rival. Um, also, their English fluency is higher. So it also helps them when they first get here, right? For sure, They can for work sure. different jobs than the average Chinese immigrant because their English is probably higher. I think it opens it up in the sense of like they can do management roles or they can do sales. Yeah. Something that requires like a at least seven out of 10 communication package and up. Yeah. Right, not just like hardcore number crunching, algorithms, coding, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I guess a lot of people are wondering, like, uh, yeah, I guess, I, I mean, India's population is growing in India. The immigrant Indian population in America is growing. I guess, like, what are people saying, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be interesting just to quickly bring it to some, like, levels that people can grasp because sometimes these things are very macro and they're about, like, human development on a global level and et cetera, et cetera. I don't think there's, like, going to be India towns like the way there's Chinatowns because, like, the Chinese that built the Chinatowns, they came to America, like, 120 years ago. Right. And I believe the Indians, in terms of really large numbers, it's more recent, so they have more ethno burbs than mm. uh, India towns. Yeah, but even to this day, I guess you don't know that many Indian ethno burbs. There definitely are some, but I'm saying there's not a ton. A lot of the time, and we've talked about this on the channel before, see our uh, why there's so many uh, Indian CEOs video, but I guess like it's they don't like to necessarily build the towns together. They're yeah. okay mixing with other people. Yeah, more. it would be more like four Indian spots in like a plaza versus like 400 spots in a cluster. Right. Because I think that obviously the truth is a lot of the Indians that make it to America, they are a little bit more educated, have a lot more uh, connections and more English education. They can fit in with the Western systems. So there's not, there's less of a necessity to build auxiliary systems mm. too. Um, also, I think that you can see it, like the way they mesh with culture is different everywhere from anybody from like Mindy Kaling, Vivek Ramaswamy, Hassan Minaj, Cal Penn, obviously Nikki Haley, it's almost like, because I think the main thing, the, the biggest way I could draw the differentiation is that Indian culture is extroverted and Chinese culture is introverted. And I think that that is a huge, huge distinction, especially, obviously, I'm making a generalization, but I would say a lot of people anecdotally would tell you that that's true. Mm. Because because that means that you can do, like, extroverted jobs, which is, like, politics, yeah. media, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I guess you would say that definitely from a communication standpoint Indians more prefer like to communicate verbally in English versus Chinese people but then also they don't intermix with other people as much right on, on, a, marriage comes basis, to marriage on a on yeah. a statistical marriage basis they intermarry a lot within themselves but in terms of who they're willing to communicate with they'll talk with anybody right. so anyway let's just get into the comments section some people of course Andrew are the doomsday sayers about population talking about man today's 8 billion we needed the globe back when it was 3 billion oh my gosh this mother earth is not gonna has already issued its warnings no more people guys what do you think about this because Elon is trying to say there's not enough people on earth to fuel the economy and like the human drive to mars and then there's other people that are more environmentalists saying that humans are like absolutely wrecking the earth uh man that's a tough take yeah i mean i understand that definitely more humans means more economy and more economy usually means more pollution uh is that always the number one issue for a lot of people i mean at the end of the day how are you going to tell like a country to worry more about the environment than raising people right now. You know what I mean? Like developing yeah. countries or it, like, even, well, well, not saying India is all developing, but I'm saying the parts of India that are more in development than others. Yeah, and like, China's still in development too, although it's like further along its development timeline. It is difficult because like, uh, I guess the West already went through its development timeline where they were polluting the earth in its industrial era. But then it's like tough to say it to these people because you're almost like at a further point in your development, right, right, judging right. these people for being polluting wherever they are in their timeline. I don't know, tit for tat. Somebody says the wealth gap in India is probably one of the largest in the world, meaning that most of India's wealth is held by a minor few. So it doesn't matter how many young people India's have if they cannot uh, have the opportunity for a decent job. Mm. So I had to look it up. Um, it is true that the distribution of wealth is one of the largest in oh. India and possibly due to, you know, let's be honest, caste system, some things from the past, sure. but they also have an increasing middle class right now. So it's almost like 
Are we talking about where they're at? Or are we extrapolating where the trends are going? Interestingly enough, Andrew, China used to be have a very low wealth gap because it was a communistic country, right? right. And then they switched their th system to more capitalistic and they have a widening wealth gap. Mm. So it's like, that's really interesting. Like we said, there's different forces going on in different countries. It's hot and cold water mixed together. Somebody's saying, China is prosperous today as a country because they curtailed unsustainable population growth. Having to pay for more retirees is a much smaller price than paying to exhaust your country's natural resources. Um, how much do you think it's true? Because obviously a lot of places, Andrew, they cannot implement policies the way China did. You know what I mean? It would be impossible to limit people, especially... In a country like India, where maybe people are more, they have more, they're used to having more freedom, mm -hmm. and they have religious reasons to have bigger families. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just like the pros and the cons of anything, right? Like, if you have a bigger population, you have to provide more opportunities, or people just have to be more willing to accept a conventionally on like at least a Western scale, less materialistic lifestyle, right? Um, somebody said, and every single person on earth nowadays wants to be at minimum a middle-class consumer. How can the earth sustain this? Do you but agree is, with is this? Is that wrong for everybody to want that? So you're saying, you're questioning that every human has the right to whatever America painted in Hollywood and Yo, stuff. That's tough. I mean, dude, that's that middle-class lifestyle, to be honest, is... Pretty it's, fire. it's pretty fire, it's right? Great. Especially you didn't got to work that hard. You only yeah, got to work like 45 work, a week. You work hard, but you don't kill yourself, and then you get to live okay and get to generally kind of do what you want within reason. Focus on sports and yeah, stuff like that. It's, it's, a, it's a good lifestyle, man. I that's, would say that's this, the dream, I think, for a lot of people. All right, all right, I agree with you, so that's a good point from you, but I would actually question this. I don't know if everybody wants to be a middle-class consumer. I do think that people are cool with, like, electric motorbikes and, like, just folding cell phones to some extent. You know mm. what I mean? Like the, there's some things that like stay with you all day long. It's hard to describe. If you guys have ever been to third world countries, sometimes having a really sick motorbike and a really sick cell phone and a place to kick it could do a lot, at least for the single male population. Oh, uh, okay. I you know what I mean? Like saying, there's, yeah. there's ways to like ease it up because I'll tell you this. I do not think it's possible for 8 million people to live in American middle-class lifestyle consumeristically. Oh, no. It'd be crazy. It'd be. Anyway, let's move on to the USA comments. So these are comments about how the Indian American population has now surpassed the Chinese American yeah. population. Somebody's saying, with two Indian Americans currently running for president, I don't think this comes as much of a surprise to anybody. By the way, the VP is also half Indian. Mm. So there is a ton of Indians uh, entering American politics right now. Yeah, right? that's true. There's a lot of Indians. Uh, and yeah, I, and I also think that they're talking about uh, how many tech CEOs are hiring Indians. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean- that is true. I mean, we've definitely noticed that a lot of Indians in leadership positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we said, I mean, pretty different skill set than what Confucianism teaches, even though there's definitely some similarities in some sense. Um, of course, somebody was pointing out, they were saying, I'm a Christian Indian and I'm not going to get hired versus another Indian of the same caste as somebody because everybody that is Hindu is so caste, is even though they're in America. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know how true that is, but... Obviously, I'm sure it depends on the individual. Yeah. Right? I hope that people wouldn't bring that over. But, but, I, but I have yeah. been seeing, Andrew, I believe Washington State has a law and California is thinking about adding anti-castism laws from Indian to Indian on the law books. But obviously, a lot of people who are not Indian were like, wait, what are you guys even talking about? Yeah, but I guess if it's easy to pass that law, you might as well. Right? It just cuts down on discrimination. Yeah. Somebody said the main reason for this change is that Chinese Americans intermarry a lot more than Indian Americans do. And someone was saying, yeah, man, sure get with a lot of white guys. You know, I like them a lot too. Um, I guess, how much is this true, Andrew? Because the, if you factored in half Chinese kids, right? And I'm assuming a lot of it's a lot of the mom is Chinese and the dad is white or something else apparently eight hundred thousand mixed chinese kids right there's eight that then and i would if you count them as chinese then it would keep the chinese american numbers above the indian american numbers yeah 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 they well i mean it's not a competition man whether you count the hoppers or not like whatever it's not really a competition i guess i'm just interested to see how the community the asian community is going to change or develop moving forward with so many indians in america because you know like when we talk about asian americans oftentimes we are, a lot of people are referring to more like East Asians, right? Or at least a mongoloid looking person. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a funny term. Yeah, no, that's, that's Southeast Asian as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but I, I, I guess they're referring to more Southeast Asian and East Asian. That's when 
when people say Asian American, right? Somebody sometimes, who can be mistaken for Chinese. Sometimes right? the South Asians are somewhat left out, but the South Asian population is so big. Are they going to identify more as Asian and, and we're going to combine powers, I guess, combine powers, or is it going to be feel a little bit more separate? Yeah, I think it would be cool if we could combine, but realistically, I think it's going to be like its own category. Yeah, because if you if really not, made me bet money. If Indian people and other Asian people are not intermarrying each other, then and actually blending the communities, because that's how you really blend. It's not just working together. You actually have to like marry each other. And I actually think statistically speaking, both uh, East Asians and Southeast Asians, as well as Indians, are more likely to marry a white person than each other. Oh, you mean then a different group? Yeah, then then a South Asian marry um East Asian or East yeah, Asian. Yeah, probably, they're, they're more both more likely to marry white than maybe intermarry. Southeast Asian to East Asian. I, I would imagine that's a pretty. Oh high yeah, number. yeah, that's pretty. High. But but yeah, I guess I I know what you're saying. But yeah, anyways, David, I guess any other thought? Like, what are your takeaways? Like your overall thoughts? Because I I'm just interested to see how I guess it impacts Asian America and like even what we do and what we talk about. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think that. It's going to be interesting to see that these two ancient civilizations from way back in the day, thousands of years ago, are going to have a significant impact on the world moving forward, but not in a conventional, like, you know, Roman Empire way at all. More like as economic consumers and workers and contributors building businesses, uh, whether as an entrepreneur or entrepreneur, I think that that's like the most fascinating aspect of it. And nobody's really like thinking about it this way, even yeah. though statistically it totally is this way. It's going to be Chinese and Indian people in mass. I'm not saying that either of them like are as cool as like Japanese or Korean people, but I'm just saying they, <laughs> they got the numbers, you know, they have the mass critical mass. And I think it's interesting. I mean, I'm going to end on this last comment from this uh, country person. Somebody saying all Asians I've met are smart, educated, hardworking, family centered and law abiding, contributing members to society. And they're probably even better than us. Native born Americans, man, we need more of them. So, Hey guys. It's an interesting concept. We'll see, man. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. What do you think about India overtaking China on the global population ranking, as well as Indian Americans overtaking Chinese Americans on the internal USA AAPI rankings? Um, until next time, we the Hop Up Boys. Keep it civil. We encourage debate. We out. Peace. Peace.